I'm one of the people who would not have a problem with there only have ever been one Terminator movie and it being the first one. One of the things, nobody goes home, nobody else comes through, it's just him and me. Remember that? That would be Kyle Reese in the first fucking movie. That was part of the concept. One man, one machine, that's it. The second one says, oh wait, there were more Terminators sent back, there were more time machines. Why? Because money talks. Let's look at the whole time travel thing, shall we? In the first movie, it's revealed at the very end that everything was a fucking causality loop. Everything that happened was meant to happen. How do we know this? Because the photo taken at the very end was the one that Kyle Reese had and that burns in the future. Clearly, everything that happened was meant to happen and although the confirmation of the victory won't be until decades into the future, it is saying, we win, we just barely win. The second one says, oh wait, you can change stuff. You know, destroying Cyberdyne systems and, you know, the relics from the future seems to possibly prevent Judgment Day. Cameron even made that crappy, overly happy coda ending. Even the most positive person on the planet would be disgusted by the fucking cheeriness of them. Thank God he didn't keep it for most of the versions anyway. Now as for the time travel, I'm not against different movies in the same series changing ideas and expanding, but going from a closed idea to a much more open idea, it, it seems like it should be the other way around or just not because the time is a river concept contradicts the causality loop of the first one. How about the fact that the time travel paradox makes the whole thing come apart like an especially ill-constructed house of cards? Okay, in the first one, everything that happened was supposed to happen at, and we get confirmation at the end that things will go the way Cal Reese said they would go. A leads to B leads to C leads back to A. In this one, the war doesn't happen, which means that Calories doesn't get sent back, doesn't father John, John doesn't help destroy Cyberdyne, and we're fucked. I see no such hole in the first one. If there was only one movie, it would make sense. But Cameron threw that. But Cameron threw that out the window because he had ideas left over and Arnie wanted to do another one. Let's talk about that a little. Arnie wanted to do another one, yet he insisted that it be more family friendly. I'm sorry, if you walk up to someone and ask them for, you know, a favor, hey, let's do this, do you get to make demands? Not in my book. I'm sorry, Arnie, you made a great Terminator. You're apparently a real charming guy, but fuck no. The first one was a pitch black, dark, bleak fucking movie. You don't make it more family friendly. I am glad that it is still a fucking R, you know, they swear there is some blood and violence. They didn't pussy out and make it PG-13. But the T-800 does not kill anyone. The only character he kills is the T-1000. Yes, for most of the movie he's sworn to John that he wouldn't kill anyone, but he doesn't even kill anybody before that point. He doesn't kill any of the bikers. Also, in the biker bar, was that knife seriously supposed to go through his fucking arm and into the table holding him there. I only on this most recent viewing discovered that maybe that is what it's supposed to be and the reason it took me so many viewings to get to that theory is it makes no sense. The knife wouldn't go through like that. If it did, it would... Bl if he had a fucking knife puncture two parts of his fucking arm like that, he would scream way fucking more. I don't give a shit that he's a biker. I do gotta admit, the self-irony is funny. You know, put the gun down now, and then he does it. it ah, crap, do you have a quarter? Here you go, you know, that's perfect. And if you had to, if you had to make a sequel to Terminator, I guess you had to be a little bit self-ironic over it, because he's a pretty fucking humorless guy. And if we're gonna spend another two hours with him, we gotta have just a few laughs, you know. And he's still badass. Big points to Cameron for that.
that reminds me, the fucking thumbs up at the end of the movie is just repugnant in its sappy, shitty, quote-unquote, glory. I fucking hate that shit. Besides, hadn't his chip burned by then? I also will admit that as kids in movies go, and as kids in action movies go, Edward Furlong as John Connor is not that bad. Yes, he can be annoying, like, you know, try to watch his face as he's driving by himself to escape the T-1000 on the road, and just try not to crack up. It's seriously fucking... But with that said, he can also be pretty damn cool. Like, watch his face when he gets the duct tape. Or when he, you know, flicks open the switchblade and hands it to the Terminator. And without ceasing to be a boy, you know, not fond of his crying there at the end, I order you not to go, I order you not to go. I also sometimes do gotta wonder what on earth happens to the red mullet that he's befriended. Seriously, once he's shoved out of the way of the T-1000, he's never referred to at all in the film. Let's face it, he was there so that John could deliver exposition, you know, oh, she's at the Pescadero Mental Hospital. Would a boy his age really talk like that to a friend? Another boy at that? I think not. And then for there to be, you know, a friend character to warn John, who's quite fittingly stopping nuclear missiles in a video game. Other than that, he can. Why is he such a fucking asshole in the dipshit scene? And why is that the only time in the fucking movie where the T-800 actually tries to kill someone? And then he has to be told, don't kill anyone. Then there's that scene with, how can I lead an army if my mother won't listen to me? I'm sorry, dude, you're 10 or 13 if we're going by later installations. Seriously, every single fucking sequel to The Terminator fucks with the ages of these characters. Anyway, dude, you're 10. Your mother won't listen to you? Well, cry me a fucking river. I appreciate the sentiment. I get that, you know, yes, he has to lead an army and people has to listen to him, but it's his mother, and he's 10. She's had more military training than he has. The way he teaches the T-800 to talk is also maybe a little bit just pandering to, you know, Bart Simpson fans in the audience. Also, the whole father figure thing, you know, in an insane world, it was the sanest choice. That is one way to look at it. Another way to look at it would be in an insane world, it's still a pretty fucking insane choice. It's a robot. You think the sons of distant fathers grow up screwed up? Just wait till you see what a fucking robot is gonna do. Hello, youngling. I have replaced your mother. I'm sorry, to me that blows the idealized romance of the first one completely out of the water. It makes no sense to have a father as a robot. Yes, by now it can learn because they flipped the switch on the chip. Still, I do like the chip scene. That is really, really cool. In general, I think it's really cool that they got, you know, the twin of Linda Hamilton and, you know, the two Lewis twins, as opposed to the three Lewis twins, to play, you know, well, in Hamilton's case, also the mirror image, but in both cases, the T-1000 imitating that character. I do think that Sarah's line at the end of it is a little weird. Fine, we'll play it your way. It sounds like Cameron is trying to be cool and not quite getting there. In general, some of the dialogue in this is so bad. How about when she's telling Dr. Silberman about the atomic blast? On August 29th, 1997, it's gonna feel pretty fucking real to you too. Good, so far. Anyone not wearing one million our sunblock is gonna have a real bad day, get it? And... No, abort, abort, that is a shitty line. I do like the don't ask exchange between Miles Dyson and, I don't know, the assistant guy, and how similar it is to that scene in the special edition of Aliens. And again, don't get me wrong, there are some really good lines, like, we've got Skynet by the balls now, don't we?